What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the brand new features that were just added in the newest version of Lumion, version 2023.3. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this newest version of Lumion, they've actually changed and adjusted and added some pretty significant features. So I thought we could talk through these features and I can show you kind of how that they work. I will also link to this in the notes down below so you can go to this page and check it out yourself. All right, so let's kick this off by checking out the new example file. So it's the house of time file um, and you can open this up and this is actually going to give you the ability to check out a bunch of the new features. Um, I do love when uh, when programs like this Im include um, a number of example files because they give you a way to kind of like practice and work with the various tools. Okay and so the first thing that I want to talk about is um, we now have the ability to add our own custom HDRIs in our photo mode. So if you jump over into photo mode like this um, what you can do is within the real skies function, notice how there's an option right here to load a custom HDRI file. So if I wanted to, what I could do is I can click on this and you can go find your own custom HDRI and bring it in and use it as a background like this. So notice how I'm able to use my own custom HDRI file in here. And let me kind of fly up a little bit so you can see it a little bit more. Um, you can see how this HDRI file, it's kind of being blocked by the horizon in here, but notice how my lighting is coming in here using my own custom HDRI. So you can now bring in your own custom HDRIs. And um, if I kind of zoom out on this a little bit, render it out, I think this looks really good with my custom HDRI. So that's something we've been waiting for for a while. I think everyone's gonna be pretty happy to have that um, available in Lumion. And so next up is you also have the ability to keyframe your HDRIs. So if I jump over into movie mode, for example, and let's say that we wanted to pick uh, maybe this uh, this close up right here, right? This close up animation like this. Let's say that I wanted the lighting to adjust in here within the real skies function in the animation settings. You can actually keyframe that heading. So if I click right here, and add a keyframe, and then rotate over here and add a second keyframe. Notice that I can adjust the heading of my lighting in here for each one of those keyframes, and then. If I play this, notice how my lighting is going to adjust based on that new heading. Now, generally speaking, you probably wouldn't want something quite so strong in here, right? You'd want that heading to be at least somewhat close to what the other one is right here, so 51 degrees. So this one might be more of like a 60 degrees or something like that, something a little bit more subtle. But now if I play this, notice how my lighting is actually changing and adjusting. So you can keyframe um, the movement of that HDRI file in your animations. All right, and so within line placement mode, which has always been kind of a straight line in the past, notice how there's now modifiers over here, and specifically we wanna focus on the control key, because with the control key, now this line modifier is in here as a spline. What that means is that means that you can add a curve in here, and then you can modify and adjust the points on this curve like this in order to make this align better um, with things in your model. So there's an option for place on ground in here, as well as an option for conform on ground, which is going to affect the way that your objects are actually placed on the surface. But this actually makes this tool substantially more powerful. And if you do want to just draw a line, you can do that, right? You can just click and drag or sorry, you can single click and then place this point right here. But if you hold the control key, notice how you can add an additional point on here as well. And you can adjust this spline in here using this gizmo right here. So definitely an improvement to the way that the uh, line tool places objects inside of Lumion. And then we've also had some improvements to the cluster placement tool right here, right? So we can set the range of the cluster, but we can also adjust the number of items that are being placed in here. Um, you can set randomization of direction in here. Um, you can set the randomization of positions in here as well. And it's all really easy to use. So say I wanted to add a couple different kinds of rocks to this, like this. Notice how you can use this 
in order to make a significant number of adjustments in here um, using this tool. And I've always liked the cluster placement tool anyway, just because it does a really good job of just kind of like randomly placing things inside of your scene. So seeing this improvement to the cluster placement tool, at least in my opinion, is really good. It adds to a tool which is already really good at just placing clusters of objects in your renderings. All right, so next up, we've got a fairly substantial improvement to the quality of the data that you can bring in using OpenStreetMaps. And we'll just pick uh, wherever this is. Looks like this is the mall in Washington, DC. Um, but basically what this does is if you were to bring in um, this location, right? So if we click on start, Open store download OpenStreetMap data. This is going to bring in that OpenStreetMap data and um, it's going to place that satellite image right here. Well, what you're going to notice is the quality of that satellite imagery is significantly better than it was before. And notice how that texture is definitely taking longer to import too, because it is a higher quality texture. So just be aware of that. But let's go ahead and let's toggle off things like our road, other things like that so that we can see our actual OpenStreetMap data. So if you look at this, the detail on this OpenStreetMap data is actually really good, right? You can see where the roads are. Uh, you could toggle the buildings back on if you wanted to like this, but just notice how this has brought in substantially better um, imagery than you were getting previously, um, which if you do anything with locations is a very welcome upgrade. And so they've also added some new landscape materials. So if you're painting landscapes using landscapes function, function notice how now um, there's a legacy folder, which is the old landscape textures. And then you've got these new landscape textures that are in here as well. So um, they've changed and added these new landscape textures, which um, I'm assuming are higher resolution. I haven't really paid a whole lot of attention to them, but they have made that change to the landscape texture function. Note that they've also um, upgraded the landscape presets in here as well um, to the new uh, landscape materials. So um, change and adjustment to the landscape materials that are available inside of Lumion is here. And so within the asset library, they've added a number of different stylized assets. The stylized assets are here specifically to allow you to uh, create kind of a uh, kind of an early type massing. So those are designed to allow you to add things like this um, to kind of illustrate where trees and plants might go without actually um, without actually having to bring in the high poly assets. I haven't checked. I think there are there are different stylized assets for things like vehicles. There's stylized assets for things like people. Um, it doesn't look like there's anything for furniture, but if you do want to bring in some of these low poly assets early, you can definitely do that. Now that is going to tie in with the next improvement, which is the ability to do kind of like a polystyrene or styrofoam looking render. And so I'm gonna jump into the downtown development model and we're gonna go ahead and toggle things like the people and the cars off like this. We'll go ahead and toggle the trees off as well. So what we have now is we have the ability inside of photo mode, um, if we create our own new scene like this, there's now an option in here to create a styrofoam render. It's under architectural right here. What that styrofoam render is going to do is it's gonna come in here and it's gonna render this out as if everything was styrofoam, right? So you can use this. Notice how I can adjust the diffusion in here a little bit to get different looks, but you can use this in order to create more of like a styrofoam style render in here. And so we'll go ahead it will save this, but this pairs pretty well with those low poly assets, right? So if I was to bring in some of those low poly like tree assets, for example, um, I could drop those in like this, maybe get something a little smaller. And so I'll go ahead and I'll just drop, uh, I'll just drop one of these presets in here, but you can see how we can quickly do this like styrofoam style render in here with these models as well um, in order to give us kind of that like quick massing look. And so they've also added new static characters to the library. Um, so you have access to those as well as we now have the ability to use the IES profiles for your Omni lights, meaning you can bring in these IES profiles, which are going to make your lights much more realistic based on our real world, um, real world kind of engineering of the way that the lights are going to look. So you can bring those, uh, you can bring those IES profiles into your lights as well. And then another fun feature that they've added is the ability to do color 
correction um, with, um, I don't know if you call them LUTs or LUTs, um, but you basically use these in order to do color correction in your scene. And so if we jump into this scene, for example, if we jump into our effects, it's gonna be found under enhancements and color correction. And what you can do with these is you can either come in here and adjust these manually, right? You can adjust the tint, other things like that, but you've also got the ability to select from this dropdown. And this dropdown is basically gonna give you different color profiles that this is going to apply to your image, right? So I can just jump back and forth between these different files like this um, in order to get different color um, effects inside my scene. And notice how those give you the ability just like really quickly to um, get your different looks inside of your scene just by making a little adjustment right here. And you can adjust the intensity of what that's doing using this slider like this. And then you could also kind of dial it in, right? If you wanted your saturation to be higher or whatever, you can just use the slider in order to make those changes. All right, so overall, um, I think this is a pretty strong addition to um, the new version of Lumion. So it's probably one of the bigger feature additions we've seen recently. And I think there's a lot of good stuff in here, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version? As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.